Have you ever wondered how much energy the sun delivers every day to our planet? Well, it is several thousand times more than humanity's daily energy needs. Now that's good news, since it means that we need to capture only a tiny fraction of this energy and then we would be able to power our planet sustainably. So how can we do this? Since sunlight falls in a diffuse manner over the surface of the earth, we need large areas to pick it up. In addition, only a small proportion of the incoming sunlight on our planet falls on land, since 70% of the earth is covered with oceans. However, agriculture is a means to pick up this diffuse sunlight over large areas. Plants use photosynthesis to capture the sun's energy and this energy is stored in the chemical bonds of the biomass. This biomass can later be converted into biofuels, which are a sustainable replacement for fossil fuels. So what's the limitation? Well, humanity's food needs are also met by agriculture. The Earth's population is still growing, but the land available for agriculture is constant. For example, India is the second most populous nation on Earth, with the largest amount of arable agricultural land compared to any other country. India is also the third largest consumer of fossil fuel in the world. But if one had to substitute India's current fossil fuel requirements, with biofuel made from plant biomass, then one would need more biomass than all of India's agriculture produces today. How can we solve this problem of limited agricultural land in order to get more biomass? Is ocean agriculture possible? The oceans receive most of the sun's energy by default since they cover 70% of the planet's surface. The tropical oceans get the largest proportion of this energy, which is why they have such warm waters. Warm temperatures are ideal for rapid growth of plants. Our research revealed that there is a long history of cultivating plants in the sea, especially in the tropical regions of Southeast Asia. These plants are grown for extracting gelling agents like agar and carrageenan. These tropical sea plants also grow rapidly and can be cultivated all year round. So what's holding back ocean farming? Well, the cost of the sea plant biomass is currently quite high because the cultivation process is labor intensive and involves hard work in the heat and humidity. Sea plants are manually tied on lines and put into the sea for growing, and then manually harvested after they are fully grown. Also, the cultivation is restricted to sea areas where the water is calm and shallow so that people can work safely, and the sea plant does not fall off the lines due to shaking. These limitations make the sea plant biomass expensive because they restrict the amount that can be produced. What if we could mechanize sea plant farming like the way tractors improve productivity in land agriculture? Would that remove these limitations? Well, this seemed like a super exciting opportunity and within the realms of engineering feasibility. So my co-founders and I started C6 Energy about 11 years ago to see if we could make this happen. So what, what aspects of sea plant farming can be mechanized? For example, the harvesting could be made easier using a mechanized harvesting system. The seeding step could be performed by an automated seeder stuffing tube nets instead of tying seedlings by hand. The use of tube nets also provides multiple supports to the sea plants allowing them to survive in rougher waters. All of these individual subsystems can be integrated into one tractor-like machine called the sea combine. 
Using such systems, deeper and larger sea areas can be accessed and at the same time, the cost of the sea plant biomass can be reduced. So how much sea area is required to make enough biofuel to substitute India's crude oil needs? The good thing is that sea plants grow faster than land crops. So the yields of biomass per hectare are higher compared to land crops. So less sea area is needed. Nevertheless, we estimate about 100,000 square kilometers of sea area, about the size of the state of Tamil Nadu on the sea, would be needed to grow all the biomass required for this purpose. The sea area around the Andaman and the Nicobar Islands alone is several times more than what is needed for this. Biofuels from sea plants will become profitable only when done on a large scale. However, this could take huge and sustained investments over several years in order to achieve this. Meanwhile, how could ocean farming become economically viable at smaller scales? It turns out that there are many other useful products that can be derived from sea plants that are profitable at lower volumes. We can manufacture these products and use them to generate profits while we scale the ocean farms to the sizes where biofuels could become viable. For instance, a plant growth promoter can be produced from sea plants that can significantly improve the productivity of land-based agriculture. Using these products, we can produce more food from the same land area and feed more people. A feed additive produced from sea plants can help to fight diseases in shrimp and fish cultivation and also improve the productivity of aquaculture. The gelling agents in sea plants can be converted to a biodegradable plastic material, which can replace petroleum crude derived plastics in many common applications and reduce plastic pollution and several other products. So what can we look forward to in the near future? Ocean farming is a way to harvest and store the sun's energy for later use and is technically feasible and commercially viable. India and many other tropical island countries have a natural advantage when it comes to ocean farming. What we need, however, is more focus and adequate capital to develop this opportunity. But there is every reason to believe that we can build a completely sustainable world for ourselves in the very near future.